But as far as I'm concerned, the first thing you can do for me is to chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest flipping dustbin you can find. Because you've never won any of them fairly. You've done it all by blooming cheating. Uh -huh. But you'll have to forgive me as I've been listening to Rangers fans singing how they'd like to wade up to their knees in my blood uh, over the last 50 years. So, <laughs> ha ha Rangers, ha ha ha. But That's the bottom line. The big house must stay open. That's the bottom line. The big house must stay open. That's the bottom line. But as far as I'm concerned, the first thing you can do for me is to chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest flipping dustbin you can find. Because you've never won any of them fairly. You've done it all by blooming cheating. This was broadly the argument of the early Zionists like Theodor Herzl, who came to believe that the only solution to the Jewish question was indeed for the Jews to leave Europe and found their own Judenstadt. Herzl made a succession of attempts to win the support of the Rothschilds in the belief that they were about to liquidate their vast capital as a response to anti-Semitic attacks. But his 66-page address to the Rothschild Family Council was never sent, as he concluded from an initial rebuff that they were vulgar, contemptuous, egotistical people. The Rothschilds, he later declared, were a national misfortune for the Jews. He even threatened to liquidate them or to wage a barbaric campaign against them if they opposed him. If a Zionist could use such language in the 1890s, it is perhaps not surprising that the radical anti-Semites who flourished in the defeated states of Central Europe after the First World War did so too. A good example is Dietrich Eckhart's address to all working people of 1919. The House of Rothschild owns 40 billion. They only need to administer their wealth to see that it is nicely placed. They do not need to work, at least not what we understand by work. But who provides them and their like with such an enormous amount of money? Who does this? You do it. Nobody but you. That's right. It is your money, hard-earned through care and sorrow which is drawn as if magnetically into the coffers of these insatiable people. Another early National Socialist who cited the Rothschilds as examples of the Jewish problem he pledged to solve was Adolf Hitler. In an article in the Nazi Fürkische Beobachter in May 1921, for example, he named them as one of a group of Jewish capitalists who controlled the socialist press. On at least two occasions in 1922, he gave speeches in which he referred to the significant difference between the achievements of a man like Alfred Krupp, who has bequeathed an immense national achievement through his indefatigable work as an innovator, and the rapacity of a Rothschild who financed wars and revolutions and brought the peoples into interest servitude through loans. The television preacher and Republican politician Pat Robertson's book, The New World Order, published in 1991, states that the Rothschilds were polluted by the occultism of illuminated Freemasonry, and that Paul Warburg, architect of the Federal Reserve System, was a Rothschild agent. From a completely different political milieu, Khalid Mohammed, a former assistant to Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the radical African-American organization Nation of Islam, has repeated the suggestion that the Rothschilds financed Hitler and aided his anti-Semitic policies. A cursory search of the internet reveals a plethora of conspiracy theories. The Rothschilds arranged the murder of President Lincoln as his post-war policies would have wrecked their commodity speculations. The Rothschilds financed the rise of Hitler as a bulwark against the Soviet Union. The Rothschilds are interwoven with the Catholic Church and jointly with the traditional mafia and the American CIA, which was pro-Nazi. They are the hidden power which controls other well-known banks, such as Warburg's, Schroeder's, and Lazar's, as well as being behind American financiers, such as J.P. Morgan, the Rockefellers, Kuhn, Loeb and Company, the Spires, and the Lehmans, not to mention the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve System, an obvious Rothschild front. 
Through this network of global power, they have been responsible for, among other things, the Boer War, the creation of Israel to control the oil of the Middle East, the Russian Revolution, a coup on Russia by the United States financial arm largely controlled by the Rothschilds, and even the floating of the dollar by President Nixon. Today, they and their associates in the Conservative Party and the press are plotting to monopolize the world's energy supplies. Hence their interest in electricity, coal and gas privatization. It might be thought that a serious banking history should scrupulously avoid reference to this kind of nonsense. Yet it is impossible to appreciate the need for a scholarly history of the subject if one blithely pretends such myths do not exist. But as far as I'm concerned, the first thing you can do for me is to chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest flipping dustbin you can find. Because you've never won any of them fairly. You've done it all by blooming cheating. Hello? Hello, who's that? Hello? Yes, you rang my number. Who's that? David Murray here. Oh, hello, David. I'm sorry to bother you. My name's Tommy Gold. Uh, I was phoning to congratulate you for the, the fine mess that Scottish football and Rangers has turned out to be. And uh, with your... With, 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 your, with, your, with your voodoo economic, sorry? Who, who are you from? Where are you from, Tommy? Glasgow Radio Online. I'm basically here to congratulate. Obviously, your voodoo economics has wrecked havoc on Scottish football. And it should the Queen obviously seek to put you in a, a stay of a big house then uh, and strip you of your title, then us Celtic fans will obviously look to, you know, for every five that you can put down, we'll put a tenner down to, to send you in goodwill, obviously, David. Tommy, I'm, Tommy, I've got your number. I'll come and visit you, OK? When would that would you like to do that, David? I mean, I can visit you, and obviously... I'm back, because you phoned my number four times, but all my calls are monitored. You phoned my phone four times in the last week, OK, Tommy? Well, it was just to get your take on the situation for the for the football and what you've done to Scottish football, David, obviously. Uh, Tommy, you're, you're a voodoo Tommy, economic Tommy. master. I was wanting your take on it. I'm a proper journalist. I'm not here eating your succulent lamb. I'm here to, to ask Tommy, you the good Tommy. questions. Thanks, what, thanks for what, your call. Don't give up the day job. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Very when much. when, when are we going to meet then? Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hi. Hi. Is that Tim? Sorry, yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi, Tim. How are you? You're not bad. So, uh, so you wanted to have a chat with Mr. Green? Yeah, if it's possible, yeah. Why, what did you want to ask him? Well, 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 well I just wanted a chat, a friendly chat with him. I feel that I can offer him extra publicity and Rangers fans, they love to hate me. And if Charles is wanting some publicity uh, through myself, if he does a, a wee chat with myself, it, it might ingratiate himself even more to the, the loyal Rangers hordes. And, and I'm in it for just a, I, lo, I, I love the fun and the laugh. I, I became a Muslim 11 years ago, brother, about well, three weeks before 9-11, and I've been phoning the radio stations, and I've been trying to put, I've been trying to put the fun... Tim, if you want to speak to Mr. Green, behave, alright? Sorry, bro? Yeah, behave. Well, but You've already done us a favour. You were the turning point. The Rangers, the Rangers fans, got massively behind us after they heard us your your chat with me. Do you know how many people listened to that in two days, bro? It was about thirty thousand people. I mean, it, it even, <laughs> it, it, it even. Well, I, 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 I don't know how many people listened exactly to the Craig White. But as far as I'm concerned, the first thing you can do for me is to chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest flipping dustbin you can find. Because you've never won any of them fairly. You've done it all by blooming cheating. Uh -huh. But you'll have to forgive me as I've been listening to Rangers fans singing how they'd like to wade up to their knees in my blood uh, over the last 50 years. So, <laughs> ha ha Rangers, ha ha ha. But That's the bottom line. The big house must stay open. Okay, here's oh. two, two octopus investments. Oh, hi, good afternoon. I'm phoning you, is this Octopus Investments who owns a company called Ticketus, perchance, do you know? 
yes, it's one. We do ha have some ticketing companies, yes. Well, is one of them called Ticketus by any chance? Yes, we do have the Ticketus range of companies, yes. All oh, right. Uh, uh, do you also have a company called Zeus under your branch? Zeus Capital? Zeus, yes, we do. So Zeus Capital is part of Octopus Investments and also part of uh, Ticketus. You, you, that is at the is, is, is Octopus Investments. Is, is there anyone there at all that you can maybe direct me in charge of Ticketus, please? Uh, yes. Can I ask who's calling? Yeah, my name's Jonathan Spears. Yes, just a moment. Hello there. How are you doing? It's crack bottom out the goal time. Thank you for all the brain den zombies, zombies out there who have followed me tonight, who have polluted my timeline with their idiotic filth. Twelve monkeys. So you've got my number, brain dead, stinking monkeys out there, brain dead zombie monkeys. Call me on zero seven. 413-920-389. I'll read that out slow for the hard of thinking and slow of study. 0 7 4 1 3 Hurry along there, Billy Noel at the back, you thick fuck. Keep up. 9 2 0 are you still there, you brain dead fuck? Three, eight, nine. Hello, Billy no fucking whales. Where are you? Billy boys, Billy no right in the heads. Billy zombies. Come out, come out, if you think you're fucking hard enough. Pull it in my fucking Twitter timeline. Oh, that's very hard and big of you all. It was a tw this is called the 12 Monkeys Podcast because we've had some bohommers on my Twitter saying it was the 12 Monkeys of the Apocalypse along with Hector Bambector and Sir David Mintyboys who killed the clergy. Yes. Ha ha ha. Rangers are dead. Your team is dead. And Division 3, was that, what was the, what was the little catchphrase you've coined? Bet free in Division 3. <laughs> the fucking fannies. Bet free, is that what you think? Well, I sat and stared in the eyeballs in the Ibrox kludgy boardroom with a director who's been punted on behalf of the calls. Have you listened to the lovely calls that I did with Brother Imran? The 20k ad, uh, attendance fee that they have neglected to pay. I'll just wait till the next administration comes along like a 61 bus. And I'll jump on board with my 20 grand ad, attendance fee that has been unpaid. Come on, zombies. This show is only here for you. I've got wonderful Celtic people coming on the rest of the week. So, clean out the kludgy time. Here's a number for all you shite bag chicken little fucking zombies. It's 07413. There you go. Couldn't be any harder. 12 Monkeys, Jamie Lauder, 1872, Marty McKinley, Richard Callahan, Sergio, Simon, RTID, Gilzar, 1873, Jamie Lyonese, whoever, David Thompson, DP, The Wordsmith, Big Mal, One of the Chosen, Colin Lundy, Thomas Meany, Ryan Bartley, Ashley Shields, Billy Fletcher, S. Ware, Gilzar, Dino, Kev Miller, M. Willie, Duncan McClellan, Jordan Matheson, Simon RTID, William Milroy, Sebastian Brosson, Ted, Carol Johnson, David Young, Jamie Young, John Glendinning, Don M., I. Ken, one of the chosen, Paul Kearney, I. Ken, Paul Pele, official, Sergio, 
Moi, Gary Stewart, Ian Black, RFC, Big Mal, Andy, Davy, George Simpson, Lorraine Dewar, William McElroy, Jimmy, Jordan Easton, Cammy Bell, Jim White Parody, James Warren, George Mackay, Grant, Craig Williamson, Alistair Power, David Scobie, Kev Smith, Uncle Watty, Jamie Lauder, Tony Side, James McAteer, Big D, Gary Kermode, Dr. Kearney, Stephen Chalmers, Martin Joyce, if you're my brother, from another number. But every one of you is dirty, shite bag, yellow belly bastards. Give me a call. Come on. You go on my timeline with your filth with the 12 monkeys. Here is 11 numbers that I will recite again. Zero. Seven. Four. One. Three. Nine. Two. Zero. Three. Eight. Nine. Now that list that I read out was from a whole host of people from wherever. There is my number. Why aren't you phoning? Here we go. Come on, someone phone. No, you don't want to phone. Is your shape bag? Oh, they don't. There was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blog out there from Brogan, Rogan, Trevino and Hogan. Now, I know this doesn't contain any pictures and it's made up of lovely, big, mad, beautiful words that you've never ever seen or understood before and you're going to be completely and utterly lost. But see if you can find someone who's learned who can maybe recite it to you. There you go. You want to find out on my Twitter just now, I have just posted Rogan, Rogan, Trevino and Hogan. Pick it out the net, you thick zombie fucks who haven't got a scooby-doo. Your club has been killed, decimated, ransacked. <laughs> and you think I'm sad? Well done. Who's the saddest cunt here? Use Fanny to troll my timeline on Twitter, who posts stupid comments on my YouTube. <laughs> this is really clever and big of you. Is it really hurting that much? Last week's decision, if you want to know the full analysis of last week's decision, yes, it's been spun wonderfully for all the dull hours and the brain dead zombies out there. You think you won? Oh, what did you win? A square root of zero, you daft fucks. You were spin, you were spun lies by the old spin meister himself. David Murray went on a willful programme of destruction of your club because do you know what? He fucking hates you. <laughs> David Murray, the ex-chairman, the way you treated him. Billy Noel, he must have loved that one. I'm going to jump for the government real stone and get you, you bastard. When you were in the Champions League. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> oh, Billy fucking Noel went to jump and get you, David Murray. I'm going to get you. You're going to get David Murray, weren't you? No, David Murray, go use your dumb fucks. This is David Murray, CSC. Yes, I've spoken to a knight of the realm who's killed your stupid fucking club. Yes, he killed your club willingly. He killed it willfully. You just have to lead, read Brogan, Rogan, Trevino and Hogan and you will see that Mr. David Murray willfully killed your club, slaughtered it, gave it. He was duped. If any of you dumb fucks believe that he was duped by Mr. White. Ha! <laughs> Give me a phone. Come on down, you chicken shits. My number's there. You've trolled my Twitter line. Here's my number. It's open 24-7. There you go. And not one of you's a phone because you're shite bags.
make sure is this show going out live yes we're 20 minutes into it we're putting a call out for zombies to come on and challenge what i'm saying to you that david murray killed your club because he hated your fucking brain dead zombie asses. he wanted to decimate your club because you snubbed them when he asked you to put money in you fucking snubbed them after all the money he put in and time and effort and you slapped him in the kisser and what did he do then he siphoned off every single fucking asset that you've got but hey don't believe me no i'm just a mad fucking crackpot go and check out azure catering <laughs> is this ringing true azure catering jjb <laughs> All those lovely jerseys you bought on the way to Manchester made fuck all because you sold out the rights to there. Every single last little fucking thing. And you know it yourselves, you daft fucks, was sold to outside companies belonging to David Murray where he would get another kickback and the money wouldn't be coming directed back to your stupid flea ledden fucking club. He ran it down to the ground on purpose. All this bullshit about the money that Craig White was supposed to come in for 18 million. Check out the money that was owed to other clubs and other players. About another 10, 15 million outstanding. So hey, this debt wasn't pared down. This debt was still massively at 35, 40 million prior to when he packaged it up with his voodoo economics tricks. He ran it into the ground and he killed your club, liquidated it, and you went into Division 3. No European football for three years. The laughing stock, the absolute fucking clowns of Scottish football, the biggest cheats. And what that document, as my good brother Brogan, Rogan, Trevino and Hogan outlined, it was set up by a solicitor, a lawyer and an accountant. The accountant was a dissenting voice. And if I was in the shoes of Brogan, Rogan, Trevino and Hogan, the way he said it was, he said that he would have given Rangers the verdict. And so I would say that if I was in the position of being a lawyer looking at the remit that was set there, yes, I would have gave Rangers the verdict. Not that it matters a shit, because there was no money ever going to be coming out. So the verdict is a dead verdict, if you look at it, because they were never going to get a fucking penny out of a club that's been liquidated. So, hey, it matters not a jot, but it was the framework of the question, the way it was set up. And then what happened was, if you look at it, two-thirds of it were against the decline of it, set up by an accountant. And the good brother Brogan, Rogan, Trevino and Hogan says that the words of this accountant didn't really seem like how an accountant would summarise it, more seemed like a judge, how it was being summarised. And if the dafties were there, out there reading it, if they could manage to, they would see laid out bare to the whole fucking world <laughs> that you participated in dual contracts, bona fide evidence of fucking cheating. And yet you daft cunts are celebrating that you think he's a one. And what did you win? Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> it's a laugh at Rangers, you stupid fucking zombies. Ah, 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 ah. Your fucking clubs did, and you are out celebrating, thinking because you two. Listen, it was on an issue of tax loopholes and regulations. If it was ruled against Rangers, the implications would have been far greater and bigger than just a meaningless, bankrupt, piss-ant piss little fucking football club in the backwaters of the British Empire, dead and buried, pre-packaged and bust into Division 3 without any debt, apart from to Chuck Green and his assortment of sp swimmingly well. <laughs> well, we feast it up in the Champions League. You can't even get a game against who were they fucking clowns yesterday, Elgin? They try, even they try to fucking fleeces. <laughs> like, well, I mean, 
an old tart in Sucky Hall Street. Everybody, why is he see it's fucking what's going down here, Rocky? The price goes down every second, do you know what I mean? You want a five or no, you're only getting a knicker for it. So you, you were so your club was sold for a knicker anyway, so everybody's taking the fucking rip out, isn't that I mean? It's let's all laugh at Angels time. Or Sevco time it should be. I mean you're out there guys in for your Halloween quite late this year, ain't you? Kid no use are fucking Rangers. Oh no, these are just Sevcovians. You're only Rangers in disguise because you're really Sevcovians. And not one Sev fucking Covian has got the homos to give me a call. Not one fucking lousy little fucking dirty zombie bastard has got the boss to fucking phone me up. I went through every single fucking name on my Twitter there. Every single last one. What is it? Am I no reading the number out? I've got a message here. Tommy, keep up the good work. Hail, hail. God bless, Alan. So the number I did give out, it does work. Hail, hail, Tommy boy. From a number that goes 075... No, sorry, I'm only kidding. Right, so there you go. So there's two Tims out there who have texted me. So the number is true. And all these people that I've had all my timeline infested, saying it was the 12 monkeys. Is that your argument? Is that the best you can do, boys? Is that the best? No wonder your club has been shafted by Sir David Murray. Well done, Minty boys. I'm now your biggest fan. I would give you a call. I would talk to you and give you big praise. But you don't fucking want to talk. I know I blotted my copybook and my cheeky bastard. But what was that when you're, you're the ex-captain? Every sinner has, every saint has a past. And every sinner has a future. Come on. If that can be for your ex-captain, surely you can apply the same logic to me. Let me back in the fold. Show me the way to eat the succulent lamb. Make it halal. And I'll sing to your hymn sheets on Murray Buzz. Because you... I've all, I missed the whole picture. I missed it. I missed that bit where David Murray fucked his right up the bake, eh? Because he hated you that much. Because you're that sick, twisted and fucking... Just fucking a sad relic and a throwback and a throw up to the past. That the Knights of the Realm and the higher echelons of British establishment want to wash their hands. Too much of a bad PR image. Similar to the PR image of old madass Saddam Hussein, who was once British and American's best friend, puppet in the Middle East, eh? fighting the proxy war against those terrible mullahs in Iran. So old Saddam Hussein, old madass, eh? until, the real, until the British and Americans realised He's a bad PR camp. This is a bad PR trip with this fucker's in it. So they went to jettison he's out the water. And look what they did into Division 3. Skint, bust and deflated and humiliated for the cheats that he's are to Scottish football. Every club and every place across the world knows that Glasgow Rangers cheated. And this document that you celebrated such a hollow fucking victory... <laughs> And you were hiding away, oh, and then you get told it's a victory, and you're all coming out, yes, yes, <laughs> it's fucking unbelievable. <laughs> oh, Jabba trainer, we salute you, your courage and indefatigability, Jabba. All the fucking zombies in the media, so he's a dumb pup, didn't he? You fucking, your club's dead. If there was any tax liability, it wasn't getting paid anyway, so there was no point. And the remit that was given to the judges, to the, the people to give this judgment, it was on a limited scale. And the questions they asked, it had to give that result because the ramifications for the whole of the capitalist system and the whole fraud of the Rothschild banking cabal, as I was playing you some of the stuff there, the whole fraud of the Rothschild banking cabal, this little pissant club from Ibrokes couldn't be allowed to decimate the whole of the capitalist fucking system, as we know it, with all the intricate tax, tax loopholes of Jersey. And then, so what happened on that document? The two judges who ruled for it, they said, look, our hands are tied, this is the verdict. Didn't go any further. 
And then it was left to this doctor, this professor, this uh, CA, a chartered accountant, this lovely lassie. Well, was it really her? The good brother Brogan, Rogan, Trevino and Hogan points out that it may well not have been. It's a conspiracy between the judges, or someone anyway. It outlined in every single minute detail. And there was no, not one, not one iota of the two people who voted it given any criticism, criticism of it or any mention of it. They just allowed it free passage. And what this lady wrote was stunning, beautiful, absolutely fucking stunning. She'd set out all the crimes that Rangers have done. Everything. Everything is there. As I was reading that, before I realised what had happened, I read the first 60 pages fully and then skimmed the next 60 and took me about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Say about half an hour, I don't know how long it took. I hadn't looked anywhere else at all. I just read it through and then got to the bottom, then checked out. Ranger had won it. But yeah, what I had read was the first part and the second part, which I added together, and it seemed to me, well, hey, there's your dinner. Look at the water with this. But as it stated, they couldn't give a verdict against it because it would have fucked the whole system. So say la vie, Rangers get a hollow verdict because it didn't matter anyway. I mean, why fuck the whole capitalist system for a company that was bust anyway? They weren't going to get a penny. And that's what happens all across the place with companies when they get liquidated. It's just happening, you know, and, and it happens with companies who are the, the tax loopholes that are set out and companies use it. Yeah, David Murray at the time was doing nothing wrong. Because that's the way in the capitalist system we've used it, he was doing nothing wrong. But in fact, because if a judge or a lawyer, like has just happened there, as Brogan, Rogan, Trevino and Hogan states, in his case of being a, a lawyer and a judge which was finishing his career and he pulled him and his colleague aside, he says, you'll be coming back here for the next two years arguing over the small minutiae of absolutely fucking nothing and still getting around it and allowing crooks, spivs and fucking ne'er do wells moving money about from here to there. The whole system is fucking corrupt. The more money you've got, the more wealth you've got, the more you dine at this table, it's all fucking corrupt. So they couldn't upset the apple cart for already a company that Sir Minty had ridden the fucking arse out of and thrown it on the knacker's yard and left for other speculators and spivs to gorge on the carcass of the deceased, defunct, bankrupt, fucking brain-dead club. C'est la vie, such is life, Rangers is dead, eh? And not one of their fans could have saved them. Not one of the fans who bothered to troll my Twitter. Are you there, Dafties? Do you got my number? Hello? Yes, Dino. Come on. Dino. Yes, I said. Hi, Andy Bear. There you go. We're asking. This isn't. I can phone anybody just now. I've got many people. I'm doing many Celtic shows later this week. Uh, with fine Celtic people, fine bloggers. I mean, I've already played on you there. Would you like, if you, or you want a call, would you like a call? Would you like the call that I made to David Murray played to you again? Or would you like another call? Would you like the Imran call saying how I had convinced I'll use dafties to buy the season tickets? What would you like? See, there's many calls here that I can put on for you dafties. You're missing a call. The phone nine eleven, and I've been phoning the radio stations, and I've been trying to put, I've been trying to put the phone. Jim, if you want to speak to Mr. Green, hey, behave, alright? Sorry, bro. Yeah, behave. 
Well, but you've already done us a favour. You were the turning point. The Rangers, the Rangers fans got massively behind us after they heard us your your chat with me. Do you know how many people listened to that in two days, bro? It was about thirty thousand people. I mean, it, it even it, it, it even I, mean, I, I, I don't know how many people listen. Yeah, do you like that, Dafties? The Rangers director laughing, laughing at how stupid you are. Yes, I'm asking you, brain dead Rangers fans. To give me a call. Come ahead, debate your case. I'm setting the stall out for an argument and not one of you has decided to phone up. It's not for Celtic fans to phone tonight. This is for every one of the names that I read out. And shame on you, shite bags, you yellow belly chickens. Come on. 07413920389. No Celtic fan phone. Just Rangers fans, Sevco fans, Sevcovians, zombies. Happy to troll my Twitter, but can't phone me up to debate. I would say that's is that one nil to me, one nil to Hector, one nil to David Murray. The club is dead. <laughs> let's all laugh at the angels. So let's carry on this wonderful uh, explanation of what has just happened, coming from the good brother Brogan, Rogan, Trevino, and Hogan. So, the lovely doctor from the first tier tribunal, the lovely lady who put down all the cases of fraud and tax evasion and manipulation and avoidance of giving details and facts to Hector. So all that remains now is the judgment to come from the football authorities and there can only be one decision there that Rangers cheated every club in Scottish football over a 10 year period. And that's the bottom line, brain dead zombies accept the facts. Yes, old Imran, he get punted at the door, mate. Imran will not be back at Rangers on the account of the call that he did with me a month ago. There's no more Imran Ahmed at Rangers. He's at the door. I'd phone my man, Brian, Brian Stockbridge. Uh, I'm oh, no bother. Oh, we phone. Yeah, I'm going to phone Brian Stockbridge here. We're getting Brian Stockbridge on the line. This is an insider to, to Rangers here. The Rangers insider we're getting on the line. Hello? This, have we got, is this a Rangers fan here? Do we have a Sevco being on the line? What do you want? Is this a Sevco fan, aye? That is. Are you a Sevco, aye? Oh, oh no, what's happening, mate? Is this the scamp? Is this the cash and carry master? How did the booth go, Mr. Parrot? It was very good, man. Very good. Internet bam pots are us on Saturday night down the London Road. It was at party time. Yeah, it was 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 party time. And there's a question and answer session by his man himself, Mr. Paul Larkin. Is, how did that go? I, um, evening when there was, um, there was like a meet and greet, and then, um, Paul did maybe an hour about talking and stuff. Um, and then the weeks went on at 8 o'clock till 9, and then the cash and carry cafe opened at half an hour. Uh, and then Paul did a bit, a bit more Q&A, and then the weeks finished off the night, and it was finished for about maybe. 11.30, but no, it was a great night, there was a really good turnout stuff there, a few celebrities, a few scams, 
brilliant, mate. That's brilliant. And so what's what's the general feeling on the ground with the with internet bam pots that you rub shoulders with? Uh, what, what, what was the general feeling there? What was what was getting said on the the death of the Sevkovians? Yeah, to be honest, I wasn't really. Um, it was more about Paul's book. Um, I mean, it's a sort of. It's. I, I think it's just. Um, I've said to you before. I think it's just the feeling as if you know that it's the way the media's trying to spin it now. You know, it's just, it's went from cringe worthy to embarrassed now. You know, I listened to Radio Scotland tonight and. Um, Sadly, our history has been intertwined with them. I mean, if they see we're obsessed by them, these are the bastards who cheated us for all this time. We just want justice. We're here calling for justice. We're the ones who are the wronged here. And we don't just do walking away against cheating bastards like them who over years. We're here to stay and to shine the light into these cheating bastards. So I'm willing and happy for them to call me obsessed or whatever. I've been called paranoid, I've been called a crackpot, bampot, whatever mad label these sad fuckwits want to call or prescribe to me, bring it on, because the sad facts are, your team is bankrupt, is bust, David Murray roges like a fucking daft whore into the gutter, your team was sold for a knicker, it was a whole fucking fraud, he allowed this to happen, he connived this to happen, he never got duped, he brought in Whitey to finish his job, who brought in Greeny, and Tommy Gold is coming here, giving it live and direct. It's a green, white and gold with a Sir David Murray conspiracy. We fucked your club right up the Khyber Pass because you're brain-dead zombies who didn't go to school. They thought everything was getting handed to you. But hey, guess what? Even the society, the head echelons of the establishment are wringing their hands because you're that brain-dead, you're that sad, you're that deluded, you're that fucking stupid, and you're that fucking childish that you troll somebody's account on his Twitter because, hey, I did a podcast and you didn't like it and you're just fucking shite bags. I'll give you the number that the big brother that I've just fucking phoned on and you can't even phone me on it. What kind of fucking clowns are you? I'll give you the number again, you daft bastards. Come on, phone in. Zero seven four one three nine two zero Three, eight, nine. Does that? I'm ask you a question, brother. Right? Can you can you give me the logic for someone who goes on to a Twitter account 
And then when I give the number out, they sit there still typing away like keyboard warriors, and not one of them comes on to justify or to argue the case. What would you say that? Is? Would you say they're shite bags? Am I justified in calling them yellow belly big fucking shite bags? Let me just be, let me just be shy, Tommy. All right. You're just, you're just, Too diplomatic, Stephen. You're too nice. But anyway, no. I'd, I, I, listen, I, I got you on to talk about all things Celtic because I couldn't manage it along uh, on the Saturday night. But yeah, so the stuff, the, the brother uh, that I've been quoting, uh, Brogan, Rogan, Trevino, and Hogan, he was there. What, what other internet bampots were there? Can you name some more? So, what other good brothers were there? Can you, for anybody who didn't make it, give us a name check out all the internet bampots. Seen the start, I'm going to watch it tomorrow, yeah, it's on there. Uh, it's got, it's got, um, it's media dot com into it. Yeah, yeah, they've got Chris Commons fiance at the start of the talk about, um, the baby Oscar appeal and stuff. Um, then they've got, um, the homeboys, they're all sitting there, um, Harper, Jason and Joe, all sitting there, beer in the Celtic club discussing it. And it's a, it's a really good watch, actually, that part of it. I mean, this is, this is before I turned up to the club. Um, Bampot wise, you had um, Matt McLone was there very briefly. Um, you had uh, the Black Knight. I, I didn't even know who that was, mate. As, as, as I say, there was a couple. Um, the, the girl, the lady Angela Haggerty, was there who assisted Phil McGillibon on his book. She was there all evening. Um, there was, I'm trying to think who else was there. Uh, Paul Larkin, obviously, was his book lunch. Um, Paul Cameron was there. Um, there was uh, Billy Noel, the guy who did the, the zombie videos, he was there, but as, as I say, it wasn't until I got home and then I seen Twitter going mad, oh, he was there, she was there, he was there. So yeah, the, the Carlick Shamrock boys were there and they've got some interviews, they've got um, the fantastic Jim from Celtic Graves on scene a wee bit, so yeah, it's a really, really well put together. Little, it doesn't usually, it shows you a wee bit of the, the music and stuff, but it's mostly a... Um, Interviews and uh, what the evening was about and sort of thing, mate. But no, it was a, it was a very nice night. It was, um, it's probably, it's the largest venue, um, and the largest crowd there's been for it. And it was, it was a fantastic size hall. Obviously, it's quite a nice isolated area, so you're not going to get any hassle or anything like that. But no, it was very good. Um, nice night, pretty chilled out. You know, end of the night, everybody's just a wee open taxis to do. No, I think there was a few folks staying in hotels and having a. After show party in the hotel rooms and stuff, having a few chins. I know you're scamming, you know, but uh, <coughs> it wouldn't be me. But no, very nice night, mate. Um, as I say, there was there was quite a lot of there was quite a lot of folk there who weren't really on the internet. I don't know. I mean, I had a few friends there who do it from word of mouth and very receptive to Paul's work and just the general feel about things. You know, it was it was all nice folk there and everybody was intermingling and stuff and. Yeah, it was nice, mate. As I say, there was... I'm trying to think who else you really interact with. I mean, obviously, you know, media guys that you know and probably talk to stuff, um, they were all there doing their stuff. So, yeah, it was good, mate. Um, the, um, the bar staff were on about the, the buffet went down well. It was cheese and vodka salsa sandwiches. It was your good yeah. self. It did the buffet, raising it for a good cause for the Celtic Graves, I take it? I did, mate. I, I nearly had snow blindness, Tommy. I'd set up 22 pan loafs. I bought up and all that, mate. You know, I should have wore sunglasses. I was just staring into white things for about nine hours, you know. Um, there was me, uh, Susie, a girl from Edinburgh, brought some stuff, and old Paul from the North of the City brought some stuff. Yeah, so we had that up, mate. And see, we, we raised nearly 300 pounds, so uh, Jim was there on the evening to collect it. It was a bit cash and carry with my Tupperware jar the money went in, so. Um, Jim took that very gratefully and, and that was it mate, so no, really, really good pal, um, can't, can't 
can't do there's no negatives really on the night, you know, there's a few people probably to hear us, but it's all about I think the only bad thing was the hangover for the, for the other people in the Sunday, but no, I think um I think Paul's got another book out in March. Um Brilliant. and it's, it's so I mean it's a really good night, I mean it's you know, when you it's just obviously you can see something you can be at a concert or a live event or a football game and see something in a different angle or perspective, but if you um the, the lads who the car the Carlo Shamrock they spent about nine, ten hours editing this and getting it together and it's just how it happened, you know, and it's it's that they've just dragged people off quietly in a wee room and they've, and they've said a few words and, and you have a wee look about uh, there's a bit when Paul speaking and uh, I think uh, BJ the cameraman just does a wee zoom around the room and there's all sorts of folk there Tommy, don't get me wrong, there's people that are quite high up the Twitter food chain and then there's plebs like myself at the bottom of the scab, you know um, very useful, but no, good evening, mate. You know, it's Saturday night, no, no hassles at all, Tom. I lost it. I know a lot of folk went to the game on Saturday and then headed straight to it. Obviously, I turned up a wee bit later when they got up in that, so no magic, mate, you know, really good. Aye, mate, aye. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, then, Stevie Boy. Join us later on in the week. I've got a few guests lined up. Uh, good people in the Celtic family, a good brother who was involved, a couple of brothers involved in the Celts for change. Someone who get really close, two people who get really close to Fergus McCann, and uh, we've got another eminent blogger who's committed himself, and another one, hopefully God willing, uh, yeah, just I'm, I'm con- concentrating instead, and, and also still on the hunt for the people uh, who are committing these crimes, don't worry, I'm still doing calls off air uh, for the people who can't uh, grow a set of balls to take a call and answer to their crimes, you know, Mr Ogilvy, Answer the phone, you shite bag. Same as Mr. Reagan. Pair of ball hammers can't even pick up the phone, taking all this public purse money. But hey, sell a V. So listen, brother, I'll let you go then. And uh, I'll speak to you soon, God willing, yeah? Alright, yes, come. Uh, don't forget the homeboys is on at 7.30 tomorrow night. They missed it tonight, they're all a little bit delicate. So they're on at half seven tomorrow night. So tune in, you might. You hear all the, um, the gruesome, um, more professional and also. Yeah, and the last of Saturday night's um, antics. All right, Paul. God bless you. Hail, hail, mate. Speak to you soon. All right, Paul. That's a bold parrot there. Buffet extraordinaire. I heard he was actually taking bookings for uh, weddings. So, yeah, he's taking bookings for weddings, uh, birthdays, uh, bar mitzvahs is his speciality. <laughs> and uh, yeah, see, so there's lovely bar mitzvahs. I think it's 42, uh, 42 loaves will be using that for the, the, the old uh, bar mitzvahs. And uh, if he needs to do anything there for the help for uh, Eid celebrations or Diwali or Yom Kippur or uh, you know Christmas celebrations, anything like that, Buffy King. I'll even, if you want any halal stuff thrown in, I'll, uh, I've got a lovely bakery over the south side that we can get in to make some, you know, lovely patisseries and croissants and such likes. Yes, we'll help the brother out. Uh, if any good people up in Newton Merns, anyone having bar mitzvahs, then we're up there or we'll get in about it. Diwali, when's Diwali? Eid, we've just missed an Eid, there'll be another Eid coming along soon. And uh, we'll get another bar mitzvah as well, we're wedding. We'll invite Sheikh Matajri over to get the christening going at the bar mitzvah. Right, I'm over and out here. It's Roger Dodger time. It's crackpot with Dougal. Not one single fucking zombie. I was going to finish in 5.55, we might as well do 60 minutes. We're not one zombie. Can phone in because they're shite bags. 07-41392-0389. Yes, Rangers were killed by David Murray. Ha ha ha. He killed yous. And not only that, he left yous in the third division. Not only that, he left you in the hands of spivs and fucking shysters to rip the fucking bejesus right out the le- the, the last bits that's left yous. And you come on trolling my Twitter. <laughs> you sick fucks. 
Twelve monkeys. Fucking twelve monkeys. Oh, I'm supposed to give a fuck. Twelve monkeys. What is all that about? What is the fucking logic with these daft bastards? What planet are you on? Rangers fans. What planet are you on? You fucking... <laughs> Your club's dead and you come on. I mean, I'm that much a fanny. You come on to my Twitter to give me grief. Shows the fucking logic and use daft cunts, you know what I mean? I'm the biggest fucking fanny out there and you can fucking come on. But anyway, sell a you know what I mean? It's been party time for the last like, nine months. Keep it up, lads, you know what I mean? Seeing your demise of your piss ant fucking club, it's been beautiful. <laughs> And then that one there during the week, he actually thought he's won something. That was just spectacular. I mean, the story from the media that they've gave you, he's, he's have swallowed it as well. <laughs> it gives new phrase, let's all, it gives new meaning to let's all laugh at angels. Got to stop it. We can't stop fucking smiling and laughing at you dafties. Stop it. Stop being so stupid. Do something concrete, come on, and get in there. I've been in the Ibrox boardroom, and I offered him, man, to help Connie's, and I think he's lost his job, which I didn't mean to happen, but I just wanted an interview with old Chuck. Hey, old Chuck. But hey, he's not even the main power on the block, he's just a puppet anyway. <laughs> he's just a puppet. So he's like getting caught for fraud, you're getting caught for cheating. What you did to Scottish football is laid bare by the good doctor in the documents last week. Laid bare. Cheats, cheats, cheats. <laughs> I can't even get it. How could you even think he's got a victory? He's, I mean, let's just suppose and just let's play Fanny's advocate here, right? And say, oh, he's got made guilty. What did it matter anyway? There's not one penny going back to the fucking taxpayer that use a fucking thing with, but like I say, it's all because David Murray is part of the capitalist system and for a little piss ant company to go bust, they have to allow it to happen. But the canny put a verdict against them because then all the rest of the companies out there, it sets a precedent law was what's on precedence and so the reason why they worked on the Ramsey case and whatever and the only reason they were allowed to go on that certain aspect of the law and judgment on was for a particular reason. They were asking them a certain frame question and there was only one explanation could be given and that's why two thirds of it pointed out that Rangers were guilty of double contracts and massive evasion and fraud. It's going to be a judgment where Hector will be able to question it. But what it was done, that reason, and I'll leave you with this last thought, the reason that I've gleaned from Brogan, Rogan, Savino and Hogan is that all the documentation, the way it was there, is for someone else to come in, pick up the chalice and run with it and decimate them with the evidence laid out by the three people who were asked to rule. Two of them coming from the background of where they are could only give that one decision. And then they showed the little accountant lassie how it should be. Said, right, all that's done. Assign this to your name. We'll not dissent. And that means that leave now everything, the carcass is lying out there for everyone to finish off picking off whatever they want. That's a thank you very much. It's game over, it's good night. Rangers are bust. Confirmed cheating, bona fide. That was the evidence last week. And that's what they try to hide. Seek the truth, reject falsehood, for falsehood is always vanishing. Remember, seek the truth, reject falsehood, for falsehood is always vanishing. I was given that piece of advice by a good brother. Seek the truth, reject falsehood, for falsehood is always vanishing. Hail, hail, speak to you soon. But as far as I'm concerned, the first thing you can do for me 
is to chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest flipping dustbin you can find because you've never won any of them fairly. You've done it all by blooming cheating. <laughs>